Hello once again and welcome to MRCM Fast Facts for Part A. Today we shall be talking about microbiology. My name is Dr. Sajad Pathan and I'll be helping you today to understand some concepts that are commonly tested in microbiology for Part A. We classify bacteria as gram-positive and gram-negative. Everybody knows about it. Gram positives under the microscope, they look purple or blue. Positive, purple, positive, purple. Gram negatives look pink. It has an N alphabet, negative, pink. Each of these are classified as cocci or bacilli. Cocci or bacilli. Gram positives ha are having a huge wall, anticoic acid. Here you can see there is a peptidoglo peptidoglycan wall here in gram positive and the peptido peptidoglycan wall in the gram negative is very very small. So here you see the gram positives having a huge cell wall with uh, flagellum, ticoic acid and pilus. On the other hand the gram negatives they they have a very small peptidoglycan uh, wall uh, you can see something in addition which is present in gram negative that is the outer membrane endotoxin lipopolysaccharide outer membrane this is unique to gram negative organisms and that is responsible for the virulence so gram positives are having huge peptidoglycan wall and ticoic acid gram negative have small peptidoglycan wall and ticoic acid but have something called as endotoxin layer negative are bad bugs because they do all the negative things in this world remember one more concept is the antibiotics related to each bug changes but the bugs as such causing the infection do not change in the year 1800s if osteomyelitis was caused by staph for years in 1900 osteomyelitis most common cause being staph for years in 2000 osteomyelitis most common organism is staph for years in 2500 it will be staph for years you need to learn the antibiotics with the framework of a cell for example uh, what antibiotics acts on uh, DNA what antibiotics acts on ribosomes, uh, cell wall inhibitors, and so on. Know the most common bugs causing specific patterns. For example, like you know, uh, most common bugs that are not stained by gram staining, uh, common bugs with capsule, uh, common bug causing uh, a particular disease. So you need to know that. There are some uh, some bacteria which do not have walls. For uh, with or may have unusual walls. For example, mycoplasma. Mycoplasma do not have any wall. It has only sterols, so it may not stain with gram staining. Uh, there are some bacteria that live within the cell, so they are intracellular. Again, they might not stain with gram staining. Mycobacteria, on the other hand, have huge amount of mycolic acid, which is a lipid. That's why you it causes the caseous necrosis which is cheesy necrosis because of the lipid in it a concept that has been often tested are barriers to infection the natural barriers to infection skin the biggest or organ in our human body acts as a mechanical and chemical barrier respiratory the mucociliary escalator which clears the bacteria or any organism uh, due to the ciliary, ciliary movements. Genitourinary, the pH remains acidic. Uh, urine is sterility is due to its flushing action. GI, the pH is because of the uh, hydrogen ion acids. Uh, so acidic pH does not allow the bacteria to grow. GI anaerobes also produce free fatty acid that inhibit other organisms from going because of low pH. The lactobacilli are found in vagina and GI tract. Uh, 
uh, urinary sterility we already told about it lactoferrin and lactoperoxidase are antimicrobial due to their iron banding activity and free radical production which will kill bacteria they are present in breast milk yeah let's move on to gram positive algorithm this has been taken from first year USMLE step one most of my mnemonics will be taken from there so that because it's uh, easy to remember we classify we told as cocci and bacilli okay forget about the branching filaments we'll talk about it later right now concentrate on cocci and bacilli let's discuss the bacilli first because they are very less uh, have you heard about in pathology the anti-apoptotic gene called as BCL2, BCL2 anti-apoptotic gene. Uh, similarly, the mnemonic over here, Bacillus, Listeria, Corynebacterium and Clostridium, BCL2, uh, Bacillus, Listeria, Corynebacterium and Clostridium. You can make your own mnemonic, I remember by that. Clostridiums are anaerobes. And then they are classified as Clostridium tetany, Clostridium perfringens, Clostridium botulinum, and uh, Clostridium uh, difficile. Clostridium tetany causes tetanus, Clostridium botulism, bottle, bad bottles, babies causes botulism, which is flaccid paralysis. Clostridium perfringens causes gas gangrene, especially diabetics. Uh, if, it def if it affects uh, the scrotum and the perineal area, it is called as Fournier's gangrene. It requires wide excision and antibiotics and hyperbaric oxygen. Uh, Clostridium difficile, most commonly associated with antibiotics. The two commonly associated antibiotics are ampicillin and clindamycin. And the treatment is metronidazole and vancomycin. So, that was for Clostridium. Corynebacterium diphtheria, which forms a grayish white membrane in the throat. Uh, again, it's reduced because of proper immunization. Listeria, Listeria monocytogenes. Uh, it is uh, included as one of the bacteria causing meningitis in less than two years and more than 50 years of age. Therefore, it is said that along with ceftriaxone, uh, we need to add amp ampicillin to cover for listeria in the very young and the very old or uh, I can, we would say less than two years or more than 50 years of age to cover for listeria monocytogenes as a cause of uh, meningitis bacillus bacillus serious the chinese refried rice bacillus serious chinese refried rice causing diarrhea within six hours uh, mycobacteria we will talk about it along with the Zn staining. Uh, mycobacteria basically two types we need to remember Mycobacterium tuberculosis and Mycobacterium leprae. The Mycobacterium leprae causes leprosy uh, or Hansen's disease. Mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, very common in the Indian subcontinent uh, requires uh, treatment for six to nine months. The first two months is uh, HRZE, INH, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, ethambutol along with pyridoxin uh, plus or minus streptomycin for two months and then the continuation or maintenance period for four to six months, four to seven months uh, with uh, INH and rifampicin. Let's move on to cocci. Yeah, one, one more thing to remember over here would be mycobacterium have uh, high lipid layers in their cell wall so they don't stain well gram they don't stain well by gram staining you need a special stain called acid fast or uh, zn staining so that is one thing you got to remember uh, cocci let's move on to cocci first test which i will do when i'm classifying cocci is catalase 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 positive catalase negative catalase positive is staph aureus catalase positive is staph aureus catalase positive is staph or staphylococcus catalase positive staphylococcus catalase negative is streptococcus so catalase negative is streptococcus 
So let's move on to catalase positive. We will classify staff based on coagulase. Coagulase positive is staph aureus. Coagulase negative is staph epidermidis and staph saprophyticus. Forget about the no bias and sensitivity and things. Uh, for MRCM, they just want, uh, want us to know cocci, positive catalase, staphylococcus, negative streptococcus, then coagulase positive, staph aureus, negative is saprophyticus and epidermidis. Remember, staph aureus and staph epidermidis are normal uh, flora found in most of uh, uh, most of us on the skin. So, any any organ damage due to uh, iatrogenic intervention through the skin puncture, you remember you should remember about staph aureus or epidermidis. For example, the most common organism to cause uh, infective endocarditis in uh, IV drug abuser. It would be staph aureus or staph epidermidis. Uh, the mm, cause of bacterial peritonitis uh, in a cytic patient who's undergone tapping or who has a peritoneal dialysis catheter. You need to remember staph uh, epidermidis causing it. Uh, so this is one. Uh, we'll, we'll go back to the coagulase thing once I finish the streptococcus because there is one important point which we have to discuss. Uh, streptococcus will classify based on hemolysis, alpha hemolysis, that means partial hemolysis, beta hemolysis, that's complete hemolysis, gamma hemolysis, that's no hemolysis. Okay, I'm going to spend a lot of time on this algorithm because I'm going to cover most of the microbiology based on these two algorithms of gram-positive and gram-negative. So, uh, just bear with it. Uh, alpha hemolysis. Alpha hemolysis are pneumavir. Alpha hemolysis, pneumavir, strep pneumonia and strep viridens. Strep pneumonia and strep viridens. Pneumavir. Pneumavir is alpha. Beta is pyoagal, 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 strep pyogenes and strep agalactase. Agalactase. And uh, gamma is enterococcus. Okay. Remember, strep pneumonia has a capsule and it's the most common cause of meningitis, otitis media, pneumonia. So, it's the most common cause of community acquired pneumonia. Strep pneumonia, most common cause of community acquired pneumonia. Uh, strep viridens, strep viridens is the most common cause of infective endocarditis in a healthy individual. Most common cause of infective endocarditis in a healthy individual. It's a normal commensal of the oral cavity. Therefore, you tend to give antibiotic prophylaxis for a dental procedure in a patient who has some structural heart defect. Not for everybody. Patient who is having structural heart defects uh, or who's undergone some surgical correction of the structural heart defect, you give antibiotic prophylaxis for dental procedures. Let's go to beta hemolytic. Beta hemolytic, I said pyoagal. Strep pyogenes, strep pyogenes causes pharyngitis, bacterial pharyngitis, scarlet fever, erysipelas, impetigo, scarlet fever, erysipelas, impetigo, strep pyogenes, scarlet fever, erysipelas, impetigo. Strep pyogenes, uh, sore throat, right? Tonsillitis. So it can go from the throat. Remember, strep pyogenes, uh, pharyngitis can give rise to rheumatic heart disease and glomerulonephritis. How do I remember this? I remember throat goes to both. Throat goes to both. So from the throat, it can go to the heart to cause rheumatic heart disease and strep glomerulonephritis. Remember rheumatic heart disease is type 2 hypersensitivity reaction and post streptococcal glomerulonephritis is type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. They have tested this fact on the exam. Whereas strep pyogenes causing skin infection like erysipelas, impetigo, it does not go to the heart. 
it just goes to the kidney so skin goes to kidneys skin 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 kidneys skin kidneys skin kidneys or throat goes to both and the other one is the other one Stru a galactia this is a normal commensal sometimes uh, in uh, the vagina so uh, it's one of the most common cause of endometritis as well as it's a common cause of uh, meningitis in newborns so meningitis in newborns is like you know at birth it's remembered as like zero to one month the gel group b streptococcus that is step a galactasia as first thing second is e coli and l is the listeria gel newborns gel newborn meningitis gel it's group b e coli listeria and then uh, uh, Adolescent, it's Nigeria, and beyond adolescent age group, the number one cause is strep pneumonia. Strep pneumonia. Okay. Let me go over uh, the staph aureus versus strep pyogenes. Uh, staph aureus is the most common cause of osteomyelitis. Most common cause of osteomyelitis. Uh, staph epidermidis in uh, uh, infective endocarditis and uh, spontaneous bacterial pneumonitis. Uh, strep pneumonia is also one of the things causing spontaneous bacterial pneumonitis in adults. Staph aureus is coagulase positive. What do you understand by that? Coagulase, the word itself says that it coagulates. Therefore, the most common cause in a most common organism in an abscess. An abscess is basically a coagulation of pus cells and dead bacteria and dead tissues so coagulase the most common organism will be staph aureus and if it is a hospital acquired think about MRSA or somebody who's getting recurrent abscesses think about MRSA uh, whereas strep pyogenes contains hyaluronidase hyaluronidase will melt or kill the hyaluronic acid which is present in the basement membrane so most common cause of cellulitis will be cellulitis is infection of subcutaneous tissue and spreading along the facial planes most common organism here will be strep pyogenes okay not strep aureus so this is one point to remember let's move ahead I told you some bacteria will not stain by doing these stains. The mnemonic is these microbes may lack real colors. Actually, it's not really important as such to remember this mnemonic. But remember that these bacteria may not stain with gram staining. For example, the tryponema, the spirochete, tryponema pallidum. Uh, it, it does not because it does, doesn't have a thick wall. It is very thin wall. So they, it may not stain by gram. Mycobacteria. I told you earlier it has lipid layers, so do a acid fast staining. Mycoplasma does not have a wall, so no point of staining it. Legionella, Rickettsia, Chlamydia, they are intracellular, so you do a silver stain. Legionella, Legionella pneumonia, remember Legionnaire's disease, uh, pneumonia with GI symptoms with hepatitis, with raised liver enzymes, and uh, low sodium levels. You do urinary antigen test, Legionella pneumonia. Legionella is basically present in water, water aerosols, ventilators, uh, sp those sprinklers and all that. And note, nocardia is acid fast, just like mycobacteria. And fungus, you do a potassium hydroxide stain. What are obligates and capsulated? We are, we are just building some terms right now. The obligate aerobes and obligate anaerobes. That means the aerobes will die if there is no oxygen and anaerobes will die if there is oxygen. That is the whole concept behind treating Clostridium perfringens with hyperbaric oxygen. So anaerobes are ABC, actinomyces, bacteroids and Clostridium. Clostridium difficile is an anaerobe. Remember, so therefore you use metronidazole as treatment. In aerobes, it is Pseudomonas aerogenosa. 
so it needs air mycobacteria and nocardia in the physiology of the respiratory system we learned that the apical part of the lungs in sitting and standing position are having good oxygenation good ventilation so oxygen content in the apical part or the upper part is much higher than the lower part and the lower lobes are having good perfusion so the lower part have less oxygenation but good perfusion so that means if a pulmonary embolism has to happen it will happen in the lower part whereas if this aerobic infection has to happen it will go in the upper part therefore you see mycobacterium tuberculosis the cavities where do we look for we look at the api apical area so remember that capsules i made this mnemonic you can make your own the capsulated organism they are very very important i made the mnemonic kb shines klebsiella group b streptococcus is capsulated so group b is strep a galactia strep pneumonia big time capsulated h influenza hmm? epiglottitis organism nigeria meningitis most common cause of meningitis in adolescents okay and second most in adults e coli e coli four types of e coli salmonella salmonella remember they are capsulated now let me tell you why we are trying to learn these capsulated organisms and i, I bet you should know this for your clinical practice because the number of patients you will see uh, in whom we need them to be vaccinated against these bugs or uh, we need to think about them when we are think treating them uh, because what's the most common organism to be uh, what's the most common organ to be injured in a road traffic accident we see loads of splenic laceration because spleen has a very thin capsule so it cannot be repaired what the surgeon does is he removes the spleen we see so many sickle cell patients at age 6 the sickle cell patients undergo autosplenectomy now spleen why it is important because see the capsule the i'll tell you the story of these capsulated bugs the capsulated bugs when they enter our body there are two guards which which are like labels they are igg and c3b these are known as opsonins they will go and stick on these bacteria and they will mark them that okay these are the ones which are labeled to be taken to the spleen and to be killed there so igg and c3b even if they are present and these capsulated organisms are there in the body if there is no spleen they cannot be killed so we got to think about uh, these bugs in splenectomy patients patients who doesn't have a spleen or sickle cell patients who are beyond six years of age klebsiella pneumonia alcoholics remember klebsiella alcoholics diabetic pneumonia uh, pneumonia klebsiella alcoholic diabetic pneumonia uh, mucopurulent uh, secretions the current jelly sputum thing it's capsulated okay strep pneumonia it's capsulated so you got to give pneumovax for these patients or you got to immunize them h influenza you got to immunize against meningitis uh, nigeria uh, uh, against epiglottitis uh, nigeria meningitis you got to immunize them e coli you got to think about the hemolytic uremic syndrome kind of thing salmonella the second most common cause of uh, osteomyelitis in sickle cell patient is salmonella typhi murium you got to cover the antibiotics accordingly not only think about uh, osteomyelitis uh, in sickle cell patient not only think about staph aureus but also think about salmonella typhi murium so this is very common so uh, we said that gram negatives have an additional layer outside the peptidoglycan that's the endotoxin and it's responsible for all the bad things it causes edema it releases nitrous oxide nitrous and nitric oxide are potent vasodilators they vasodilate you know nitrous oxide nitroproside which we use it acts through cyclic gmp 
uh, it increases cyclic GMP and then it causes vasodilation, so nitric oxide. Uh, basically, it's a mnemonic E N D O B I C outer membrane. Uh, TNF alpha, TNF alpha is tissue necrosis factor, causes necrosis of the tissue. Uh, it is also known as O antigen. It's extremely heat stable, so that means heating or fever cannot kill this bug. Uh, IL-1, again it is responsible for fever. C5A is chemotactic agent. Let's talk about streptococci. Strep pneumonia, meningitis, osteomyelitis. Uh, sorry, meningitis, otitis, pneumonia, and I forgot what is S. Strep viridens. It's a normal flora of oral cavity, can cause endocarditis. Strep pyogenes. Throat goes to both, that is heart and kidney. Skin goes to one, that's kidney. Pyogenes. Pyo Jones criteria. These are major criteria. Painful joints, carditis, nodules. Erythema marginatum and sydenham scoria. Uh, Step pyogenes, if it affects the skin, cause scarlet fever, sandpaper rash, strawberry tongue, sandpaper rash, strawberry tongue. We see strawberry tongue also in Kawasaki disease. Okay. Step A galactaceae, group B is for babies, causing meningitis and pneumonia in newborn. Let's move to Clostridium. Clostridium are the anaerobes, spore forming anaerobes. We are just trying to repeat what we did in the flowchart. They are gram positive spore forming bacilli. Devitalized tissues are excellent media for perfringence and tetany. Uh, there is a question in part B What are tetanus prone wounds? More than six hours dead devitalized tissue, uh, puncture wounds. So, tetany. Is equal to tetanus. Tetanospasmin is the uh, thing which is responsible, which inhibits GABA or glycine. Treatment is you give antitoxin and give ventilatory support. Blood botulinum, bad bottles, babies, flaccid paralysis. Perfringence, gas gangrene, IV antibiotics, radical surgery. Difficile diarrhea, often it is ampere clinda induced. Listeria is the only gram positive with a lipopolysaccharide that's with the endotoxin so listeria monocytogenes that's why we are covering listeria with ampicillin in less than two years and more than 50 years causes meningitis okay listeria has a tumbling motility it is a motile it tumbles in the amnion causing amnionitis cover with ampicillin Let's move on to gram-negative algorithms. Again, gram-negative algorithm will divide the bacteria into cocci and bacilli. In cocci, we just have two, Neisseria gonorrhoeae, Neisseria meningitidis, and Moraxella catralis, the one which causes the uh, flu-like symptoms and upper respiratory tract infection. We'll talk about Neisseria in a bit. Let's go on to bacilli. We have small roads long rods and curved rods. The small rods are Acinobacter, Brucella, Bordetella, Haemophilus, Pasteurella and Legionella. So we'll talk about them now. Acinobacter is a component of HACEC group of organisms involved in human bites. Okay, Along with the Icanella corrodens, Acinobacter is there. Brucella. Brucella causes brucellosis. Uh, you can see orchitis and uh, other stuff. Bordetella. Bordetella causes pertussis, the whooping cough kind of thing. Pertussis. Bordetella pertussis causes whooping cough. Okay. Uh, the things have reduced, the incidence have reduced because of immunization. However, we can see them. Uh, Haemophilus influenza. Remember Haemophilus influenza? is capsulated the mnemonic is THE the capsule uh, thumbprint sign hemophilus influenza epiglottitis this guy is uh, sitting in tripod position inspiratory strider is present uh, and the next step to do is do not disturb the baby just pick up the phone call and call the anesthetist for intubation don't want to disturb these patients uh, 
Pascherella. Pascherella multisoda. Remember Pascherella multisoda association cat 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 bite. Okay. Pascherella multisoda cat bite. Legionella. We already spoke about Legionella. The Legionella causing pneumonia, mist, sprays, aerosol based, low sodium, GI disturbances, liver enzymes deranged. So, urinary antigen is done and cover it with uh, any uh, erythromycin or something. It gives a good coverage. Let's move on to long rods. In long rods, we have uh, the E. coli and Klebsiella, and then we have Proteus, Salmonella, Shigella, and Yersinia. Okay. The E. coli, we, we will discuss about it later. Klebsiella, we have already discussed. Klebsiella causes pneumonia, alcoholics, capsulated, diabetic, causing pneumonia, current jelly sputum. Okay. E. coli causing traveler's diarrhea and the hemolytic uremic syndrome, big time it is. 015787. They ask incubation period. Incubation period 2 to 4 days, 2 to 5 days. Okay. Uh, then we have Proteus. Salmonella, Shigella, Yersinia. Uh, e. coli has been uh, in, implicated also in UTIs. So that is one thing to remember. Salmonella, Salmonella typhi causing enteric fever and paratyphi. Salmonella typhi and Salmonella paratyphi. And this thing capsulated. So can cause osteomyelitis and sickle cell anemia. Uh, Shigella, Shigella causes bacillary dysentery. There is Shiga toxin. Again, this is associated with HUS. Possibly. Yersinia. Yersinia pestis. Yersinia pestis causes plague. The bubonic plague. Yersinia pestis. The other are bacteroids and pseudomonas. Pseudomonas aerogenosa. So it is an aerobe. Okay. Uh, it is such a bad bug that uh, people sat down to just make antibiotics against this organism. Okay. Uh, ventilator associated pneumonia and uh, sepsis one of the big big time bug which causes that then the curved bug are campylobacter remember campylobacter causes diarrhea campylobacter uh, is implicated in two things guillain barre syndrome association with guillain syndrome and reactive arthritis okay helicobacter pylori one of the bug which causes uh, gastritis gastric ulcer you treat it with the triple therapy for one week. P C A or P C M. Okay. PPI, clarithromycin, amoxicillin or metronidazole, plus or minus bismuth. Vibrio causes vibrio rice water diarrhea, vibrio cholera. Vibrio vulnificus, uh, seafood ingestion, seafood or shellfish. Okay. Let's move on to Nigeria. Nigeria are gram negative cocci classified as Nigeria gono cocci and Nigeria meningitidis. Go no cocci. There's a no word, so it doesn't have a capsule, no capsule, no condom, so it's actually spread. There is no vaccine. It goes with chlamydia. So you have got to give ceftriaxone plus azithromycin or doxycycline. Trace the contact, treat the partner. 50% females are asymptomatic, 10% males are asymptomatic. They are asking this question every now and then. 50% females asymptomatic, 10% males are asymptomatic. Miseria meningitis, capsulated, vaccine is present only for ACWY strains. So other than B, whatever strains are there, there is a vaccine. But there is no vaccine for B strain. Uh, respiratory and oral secretions. Is the spread so who gets profile access person who does intubation per person who is in close contact with the respiratory oral secretion not everybody present in the room so it may not be always pathological 40% of healthy young adults may harbor the miseria meningit uh, meningit meningitis uh, cocci on them but it will not be always pathological Treat it with ceftriaxone or penicillin G. Remember, penicillin G 
G. G is given IV or IM. Okay. Infection does not confer immunity. Okay. Profile axis with ciprofloxacin or rifampicin. Hemophilus influenza. We just uh, said this. There are two x-rays shown over here. One is the, the epiglottitis, the thumbprint sign. The other one is the steeple sign, the steeple sign of laryngotracheal bronch uh, bronchitis. Laryngotracheal bronchitis, the steeple sign you see. So you see the steeple sign in croup. Uh, it's like the, the domes of a church. Not the dome, the steep steeple of, of the church. It's a subglottic narrowing uh, in, caused by paramyxovirus. Uh, the hemophilus influenza, thumbprint sign, hemophilus influenza, epiglottitis, it's capsulated. Next step to do is intubate, call the anesthetist. Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas causes pneumonia, venti ventilator associated pneumonias, very common in cystic fibrosis. So, cystic fibrosis patient, think about pseudomonas. Sepsis, external otitis. Yeah, one of the questions often asked uh, otitis externa, swimmers here, you put in ciprofloxacin eardrops. Ciprofloxacin gives a very nice coverage for otitis externa. And suprafloxacin gives very nice coverage for pseudomonas. So external otitis, UTI, drug users, diabetics, osteomyelitis. Uh, I've just uh, made uh, this mnemonic monas hot tub folliculitis. So think of three conditions: pneumonia, ventilator associated with cystic fibrosis, otitis externa, and hot tub folliculitis. These are the three things which are very specific to pseudomonas. Okay. E. coli and Klebsiella. Klebsiella we said alcoholic abscesses in liver and lungs, aspiration pneumonia and diabetics. Uh, e. coli, EIEC that's invasive diarrhea, ETEC is traveler's diarrhea, EPAC is pediatric diarrhea and EHEC is hemorrhagic diarrhea which is a hemolytic uremic syndrome 015787 incubation period 3 to 5 days they are asking this question we'll discuss about uh, the hemolytic uremic syndrome in the pathology section later on salmonella and shigella both cause bloody diarrhea shigella may be found in association with hemolytic uremic syndrome Salmonella causes typhoid fever. You get rose spots on abdomen. Salmonella will stay in the gallbladder forever. Uh, that was the reason typhoid Mary was isolated because she was found to be the source. Uh, associated with osteomyelitis and sickle cell anemia. I told you th about this earlier because it's capsulated. The commas and spirals. Gram negative, Campylobacter jejuni, I told you bloody diarrhea, Guillain Barre syndrome, and reactive arthritis. Vibrio causes epidemics, rice water diarrhea. Yersinia pestis, bubonic plague, Yersinia entrocolitica uh, may mimic symptoms like appendicitis on the left or on the right side. Think about it uh, in kids. Yersinia appendicitis, kind of like, the, like features. Helicobacter pylori, urea breath test, stool antigen test. Two tests are available. Either you test their breath or their stool. It is associated with peptic ulcer disease, gastric cancer, and lymphomas. Okay. I told you about the regime. Uh, it is one of the bacteria which is associated with a malignancy, Helicobacter pylori. Uh, the viruses that are associated with malignancies are human papilloma virus, hepatitis B and C viruses, uh, HIV virus causing Kaposi sarcoma, Epstein Barr virus causing uh, the one with starry sky appearance and all that stuff, and non Hodgkin's lymphomas, uh, Burkitt's lymphoma, 
and uh, a parasite causing uh, cancer cystosoma hematobium causing the squamous cell carcinoma of the urinary bladder and uh, i think that's that's the list okay let's move on borrelia burgdorferi borrelia burgdorferi causes lyme disease so borrelia burgdorferi lyme disease uh, hikers hikers erythema migrans erythema migrans the tar target uh, bull bull eye lesion uh, it causes blocks and bells complete heart block third degree heart block and bilateral bell palsy blocks and bells borrelia burgdorferi bb blocks and bells remember this uh, treatment doxycycline treponema treponema causes syphilis painless chancre h ducre painful chancre okay four stages painless chancre then you get rash and lymphadenopathy you get rashes on the palms and soles palms and soles rocky mountain spotted fever palms and soles treponema palms and soles then organs are involved and then you get neurosyphilis along with tabes dorsalis the dribbling bladder and things bites and scratches let's move on to cat cat scratch bartonella hensley bite rabies and partial multisoda and poo cat poo toxoplasma gondii included in torch complex so scratch partial multisoda bite is rabies and past uh, scratch is bartonella hensley bite is rabies and partial multisoda and uh, feces it's toxoplasma dog bite rabies and partial human bite that's the worst bite worse than cat and dog and bad bite uh, human bite because uh, you need to treat it with uh, antibiotics because uh, it has all those dirty bugs ikenella corodens is one of them uh, remember the soccer world cup the player kept on biting the other uh, opponent team members all will need tetanus prophylaxis as appropriate any bites any puncture wounds need tetanus prophylaxis as appropriate all need antibiotics all the bites will need antibiotics rabies schedule now it's reduced to four doses 0 3 7 and 14 0 3 7 14 rabies immunoglobulin has to be given infiltrate at a wound site directly at the wound site tetanus immunoglobulin is given im not at the wound site it's given im at a site away from tetanus toxin injection uh, 250 to 500 units is the dose rabies immunoglobulin is uh, 20 units per kg you infiltrate at the wound directly and remaining thing you can give im at a site away from the vaccine there are certain facts which you have to learn which you have to cram and you must know it learn it before two days before the exam forget it later on i don't mind it but uh, you need to know uk immunization schedule they might put up a question incubation period of common illnesses divide the thing on short duration long duration uh hemolytic uremic syndrome i told you three to five days so remember that uh, up to one week or more than one week you can do it as you want the incubation period of some common illness notifiable diseases uh, most of us know what is notifiable they throw in hiv uh, we think it is notifiable but hiv is not notifiable and it is voluntary and, and remains anonymous the other stuff like chicken pox and the other thing are notifiable so you need to rem uh, cram it up before the exam Plasmodium. Plasmodium is a parasite causing uh, vivax, falciparum, ovale, and malaria. Female Anopheles mosquito. Okay. African subcontinent. Patients from African subcontinent, they may write Indian subcontinent. So we should not get confused. African subcontinent is most common for falciparum. And falciparum is bad and chloroquine resistant. You need to do thick and thin smears. Think of plasmodium in a febrile traveler. You do a G6PD test for quinine and primaquine treatment because it may lead to hemolysis. Parasite HIN, biliary tract, and cholangiocarcinoma, clonarchis sinuses. Hmm. 
brain cells seizures tinea solium cysticercosis hematuria bladder cancer i told you cystosoma hematobium liver cyst echinococcus granulosus microcytic anemia any hookworm any worms will cause it uh, perianal pruritus entrobius vermicularis the pervert pinworm uh, it goes uh, when you're sleeping it goes in the anal canal and then lays egg over there the how do you test it you just tape the anal canal and we call it scotch tape test to look for the eggs portal hypertension cystosoma mansonian cystosoma japanicum let's talk about a bit about viruses herpes simplex viruses oral herpes herpes simplex 2 genital herpes and neonatal herpes so herpes simplex virus in temporal lobe encephalitis remember temporal lobe encephalitis the hemorrhagic tap from lp will be either traumatic or herpes simplex uh, temporal lobe encephalitis bleeding in the temporal lobe is herpes simplex herpes simplex 1 lives in trigeminal ganglion herpes simplex 2 lives in sacral ganglion third one is varicella zoster it's herpes zoster shingles dermatomal distribution epstein barr virus causes glandular fever epstein barr virus glandular fever infectious mononucleosis associated with Hodg Hodgkin's, Burkitt's and nasopharyngeal carcinoma Burkitt's lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, nasopharyngeal carcinoma Epstein-Barr virus, infectious mononucleosis, let me talk about it in a bit uh, adolescent patient, kissing disease, flu-like symptoms adolescent patient, kissing disease, flu-like symptoms how do you diagnose them? clinically, you don't need to do a test but still if you do some test what will you get? You get atypical lymphocytes, but atypical lymphocytosis is very non-specific. So, if you want a specific test, you do monospot test or Paul, uh, sheep antigen test, heterophil antibody test, or something like that. Uh, monospot test. And uh, how do you treat it? Treat conservatively. Its viral illness will go away on its own, but Remember to warn the patient not to take part in contact sport because they have massive splenomegaly and there is tendency for the spleen to rupture. Reassess them in two weeks. So this is in short about infectious mononucleosis. Cytomegalovirus, most common antibody found in humans. In most of us will be cytomegalovirus because some way or the other we might have got a URTI associated with this. Uh, it is it becomes pathogenic in uh, autoimmune patients or aut autoimmune deficiency patients such as patients on chemo or radiation therapy and uh, HIV patients causes retinitis member of torch uh, CMV in newborn can give rise to intraventricular calcification or periventricular calcification HHV6 HHV6 roseola Roseola causes febrile seizures. You hit the bowler, a sixer, and he becomes febrile. Okay. HHV6, Roseola, febrile seizure. HHV8 is Kaposi sarcoma, which is AIDS defining. Other viruses, parvovirus B19, parvovirus B19, slap cheek appearance, erythema infectiosum. Erythema infectiosum parvovirus B19, parvovirus B19, slap cheek appearance, causes aplastic crisis in sickle cell anemia. It causes aplastic crisis in sickle cell anemia. Hepatitis. Hepatitis A is more common than hepatitis B, which is more common than hepatitis C, which is more common than D, and which is more common than E. A and E. Fecoral route. So, vowel hits the bowel. E is associated with fulminant hepatitis in pregnancy. B and C, sexual spread or IV drug abusers. D cannot survive alone, it lives with B. Hepatitis C, we can treat it with ribavirin or interferons.
let's talk a bit about RNA viruses. Noroviruses, most common cause of viral gastroenteritis. Most common cause of viral gastroenteritis in adults is norovirus. Rotavirus causes diarrhea in infants in kids. Norovirus, most common cause. Coronavirus causes SARS. Coronavirus, SARS. Paramyxovirus, para influenza, which causes croup, barking cough, steeple sign. Croup, barking cough, steeple sign. Treat with single dose of dexamethasone and conservative management. Respiratory syncytial virus causes bronchiolitis. Bronchiolitis. Bronchiolitis is the disease of the terminal bronchioles. So you, the, the patients will present with wheezing. And which most of our good physicians are labeling them as asthmatics. Remember, asthma cannot be labeled to any patient unless you do a peak flow pre and post. Okay? It's a reactive airway disease. We need to if we need to label somebody as asthmatic, do a pre and post uh, uh, peak flow and then label them. Kids cannot do that. Less than one year, less than two years of age, you cannot ask them to blow in a peak flow meter. So don't label them as asthmatics. It may be just bronchiolitis. They come with these. You can use ribavirin to treat measles and mumps. The incidence of these have reduced due to proper vaccination. Rhinovirus causes rhinitis. Measles, mumps and rubella. Measles causes cuff coryza conjunctivitis. Cuff coryza conjunctivitis. Cuff coryza conjunctivitis. Coplic spots. Coplic spots on the cheek. Especially for part 2 if they show you a baby with an open mouth. And they show you the inner part of the cheek. Think of measles. If they are showing you the tongue, think of Kawasaki. Okay. Or if they are just showing you the lips, think of Kawasaki and uh, or herpes simplex. Measles is descending maculopapular rash. It can cause appendicitis in kids. So let's talk about what was pseudo appendicitis. It was Yersinia enterocolitis. Uh, measles, appendicitis and kit. It can cause subacute spongiosing panencephalitis several years later after a measles infection. And the reason this is mentioned over here is because they had been asking this question. Mumps affects the glands. So, orchitis, parotitis, pancreatitis, meningitis. Rubella is known as German measles. Think of posterior auricular lymphadenopathy. Okay. Blueberry muffin rash. Rubella. Normal flora of the skin. We told staph epidermidis of the nose, staph epidermidis and aureus, oropharynx, strep viridens, dental plaque, strep mutants, colon, E. coli and B. B. fragilis, vagina, lactobacillus, E. coli and group B streptococcus. A bit about food poisoning. Bacillus cereus, reheated fried rice, reheated fried rice, chicken fried rice, Clostridium botulism, canned foods, bottles, babies, floppy baby, E. coli 0157, HUS, undercooked meat, EHEC, Salmonella from poultry, Staph aureus, meat and mayonnaise, meat and mayonnaise, staph aureus from preformed exotoxin. Not from the bacteria itself, from preformed exotoxin, staph aureus, uh, vitamin, uh, within 6 hours. Vibrio parahemolyticus and vulnificus, shellfish and seafood, C. difficile antibiotic use, pseudomembranous colitis. The antibiotics commonly causing it are Ampi and Plinda. Treatment is Metro or Vanco. Shigella, diarrhea with seizures. Shigella seizures. Okay. We already spoke about uh, meningitis, meningitis in newborn, gel, group B, E. coli listeria, infants and children, uh, they say strep pneumonia, Nigeria, and hemophilus, uh, adolescent and young, Nigeria and strep, older people, again, strep is number one, that's the, and 
Nigeria and Listeria. Uh, they had been asking about the cell content, the CSF examination. Remember in bacterial the protein is high, in viral the protein is not as high. Uh, look at the cells, this, these are very important, WBC count more than 500 uh, of polymorphonuclear, more than 90% polymorphonuclear cells. Whereas if they are lymphocytes or monocytes, uh, it's uh, viral or it could be fungal or tuberculosis. Pelvic inflammatory disease. Pelvic inflammatory disease is an ascending infection. It's not hematogenous or it's not sexual or something. It's ascending infection. There is a risk of infertility. About 12% incidence of infertility or ectopic. So more than 50% of these are because of chlamydia. Let's remember that Nigeria. More than 50% females asymptomatic. Nigeria goes with chlamydia. Here, PID, more than 50% case of PID are chlamydia. It may be associated with perihepatitis, the string sign, or we call it Fitz Hugh Curtis syndrome. So, that was it. As far as uh, the microbiology is concerned, we will be talking about uh, the infectious disease pharmacology in our next presentation. Good luck. Study well. Goodbye. Thank you.